Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rosal here. I wanted to record a video talking about the first two weeks on a low fat diet, my first two weeks doing this diet, how it's been, what I've figured out so far. And I wanted to do it specifically at this really early milestone just to kind of give my first impressions, not as a nutritionist, but as somebody trying to actually follow this diet with basically one page, one page of instructions from a, a dietitian. But it's been enough to like get me rolling basically and uh, i hope to do another video in like three months six months maybe also one year uh just showing how i've evolved in this pattern of eating um one thing i just want to point out i'll put this down in the description is i put together last night a few i think hopefully will be really useful to people uh descriptions of a playlist youtube playlist containing low-fat recipes um, i did a few different keyword searches for oil-free recipes low-fat recipes low oil recipes and I ended up finding like hundreds of videos and trying to organize those into playlists. Now, the reason I did that is because I'm trying to figure out what I can cook. Um, the good news is, and it's good news for me because I love Indian food, I happen to find just like a disproportionate amount of recipes from India. I don't know why so many Indians are on low fat diets, maybe because their diet is naturally very high in fat and that creates problems for people. But um, I did find lots and lots of Indian recipes i spent literally an hour if not two hours putting those all into organized playlists so uh in order that that process can be useful for other people um i'll put the links to those playlists in the description now i want to just say a few things so firstly i'm doing a low-fat diet for medical reasons i had my gallbladder removed two years ago and i've been having a real hard time since with a lot of digestive problems now i know a lot of people have the op and they're doing fine and everything's back to normal that is not what happened for me so without giving you too much information about my uh you know everything related to my digestive health i've been struggling with what's called functional dyspepsia um which is really just kind of like this mixture of upper what doctors called upper gi symptoms which means uh burping belching bloating fullness and it's really hard to get across how uh, life disruptive this has been it's been like really really depressing actually uh, because this basically has been happening like every time I've eaten anything so for two years I have almost almost no relief like peppermint capsules help a tiny bit um, I've taken medications that ended up causing me further weight gain on top of what I think the gallbladder surgery has already caused so that was not so much fun either um, there's one medication I haven't tried really yet or given a long time for, which is the most commonly recommended med for this. It's called it's a drug called amitriptyline. They also use nortriptyline. Um, and I do see a doctor for something closely related to this. Uh, and I take a drug called Wellbutrin. And he's not on he's not in favor of adding amitriptyline to that mixture or having me take it really at all. So I was kind of annoyed by that. Then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try everything I can with the diet before I go any further with taking these medications. Amitriptyline and nortriptyline are tricyclic antidepressants. They're like really old drugs. And I find I found them incredibly sedating. I was like brain fog central uh, for like, uh, I lasted three weeks on amitriptyline. And then I was like, there's no way I can take this stuff anymore. I like I have too many commitments and too much work to do and I need I need my brain to be functional. So um, I'm giving this a bit more of a shot and there's all those drugs are always there. I have most hopefully most of my life ahead of me to try out these drugs. So I'm not in a huge rush to jump at them. So that's kind of why I'm giving the diet a really uh, good push. I also talked to Professor Nick Talley interview on this YouTube channel, a uh, world renowned gastroenterologist. And he uh, really advocated for if you have functional dyspepsia, giving, making sure going, to, he said, he said he sell, sends every one of his patients out to a dietitian. So that was encouraging. And I was like, you know what? I need to see a dietitian. I already had an appointment, so uh, it just was coincidental. But here's, he, here's what I've been prescribed. And the first thing to say is that the, fun, the uh, diet for, um, low fat diets, the interesting thing for me is that they've really, really fallen out of favor. Um, they used to be a big thing back in the 80s, back in the 90s. You know, our parents, if you're also a millennial, uh, I'm in my early 30s, 
Our parents were big into these and now they've been replaced by these kind of fad diets like keto to a large extent and they really become the kind of tide of the nutritional of, of the of the kind of zeitgeist has turned on low fat diets but they do actually remain recommended um, a lot of you know national dietary authorities do recommend keeping fat to a limited extent and uh, if you have your gallbladder removed or your problems with your liver or problems with your pancreas they're still very commonly recommended by doctors and medical uh, dietary people so they're not irrelevant they're still a thing but you will find if you're searching for information you'll find a lot of pushback from keto people saying oh fat is amazing and like don't do a low fat diet it's really obnoxious if you've been told by a doctor this is what you should do so uh, you just kind of have to drown that out um, and ignore in general i'm not saying don't get information from the internet because there's low fat groups and uh, places online where are that are really useful for getting recipes but just be prepared for uh, there being a lot of negativity uh, it's not clear i think the the common conclusion from what i've seen is that a lot of the negativity about low fat is because when people cut back on fat they just add a bunch of really sugary crap and ended up having a horrible diet as a result uh, so it's not clear i think even among nutritionists there's been these long-term studies of increased mortality and i don't think anyone really knows if it's because something inherent to low fat or because people who uh, went low fat ended up eating a bunch of rubbish basically so that's number one number two the second thing i've done so my when i met with the dietitian which was last week uh she gave me like a list of foods and they sounded pretty depressing there was rice cakes there was oatmeal so it was like breakfast was oatmeal afternoon there was like a rice cake thing going on uh then there was like a bit of lentils now my favorite foods are as follows indian ethiopian nepalese thai etc i love exotic flavorful cuisine the thought of living on oatmeal and rice and rice cakes just sounded like uber uber depressing so what i did was as follows um i bought myself a little folder low fat recipe salad i had meal i don't know why meal, meal replacement is here I think at one point I was probably so desperate that I was considering living on meal replacement shakes. Thankfully, uh, this is at least a progression. And I just printed off, I've just searched the internet for uh, like low fat recipes. Like I have low fat dal and I have low fat uh, healthy chicken and lentil salad. Well, that's a bit more Western uh, soups. So I have bought a couple of cookbooks from the internet um, waiting for those to come. Um, there, there are low fat cookbooks. There is a low fat Indian cookbook. There is salad cookbooks. So it's not like there isn't, um, there aren't cookbooks. There's also YouTube channels. It's just, as I said, it's crazy the extent to which, um, the extent to which uh, it's fallen out of favor. And there's just the relative to like the amount of cookbooks about gluten free or uh, keto, the amount of information out there about low fat, Facebook groups even, uh, there's a subreddit what you people know I like reddit um, with less than 100 people I'm trying to post there to like get it going um, and the keto subreddit has like 4 million people so it's kind of crazy um, anyway so that's one thing I did I took what the dietitian told me and I started building out a shopping list next thing now I didn't get a sort of target fat per meal um or anything like that or like how much fat to eat per day she just gave me like this list of foods um what i did do is you know figure, learn what low fat means which uh don't quote me on this as a non-nutritionist but the figure i've been getting from the googling what national uh, dietary authorities their definitions sometimes differ but the general definition i've seen is three grams of fat per 100 grams of food and 1.5 grams per 100 in liquids so that's a pretty low threshold actually so that's um that's what i've been kind of looking for um now i live in israel so you're going to be seeing a lot of hebrew here on the products but i'll explain what they are because i i'm originally from ireland so i'm a english speaker uh first and foremost um so this is bulgur bulgur is uh, people probably know what bulgur is um, I've been learning to read nutritional labels in Hebrew. Not that I didn't know the words, but there were some things I didn't. So that's one thing is just uh, w w whatever country you're in, whatever language you're, you read, uh, just make sure you know how to read 
nutritional labels. So in Israel, they report on total fat. They also report on saturated fat and uh, trans fats, if those exist. But the, the macro I'm looking to keep is the total fat. So I'm looking for three or lower. So that's not that easy in certain categories, as I said. But let me just explain the, the, the golden, golden rule or golden thing, I think, is that it's easier to it's easier to think in terms of what you can eat than what you can't eat. So I'm going to just show you guys some stuff. This is a one take video. There's no post production on this particular clip. Uh, I'm sitting in my office and trying to have this lapel microphone I'm wearing not pull apart from the computer. So uh, I'm going to just reach over gently. CSA box. OK, this comes from a uh, kibbutz in Israel. And it's just full of stuff like lettuce and greens. So um, you got yourself some cauliflower and some, uh, uh, you know, and some uh, peppers and some uh, some squash and all this good stuff. So if you don't like veg like me, by the way, I'm the worst person in the world to transition to a low fat diet. You, you will meet fewer people who like fatty food more than me. So. This is why I sort of also wanted to do this YouTube, these YouTube clips is, is if, if I can make the transition to low fat, I really think almost anybody can because my favorite foods are falafel, shawarma, hamburgers, uh, crisps, which is probably why I don't have a gallbladder. So don't, don't, uh, don't, be, don't be like me and uh, probably everyone should moderate their fat intake. So number one is uh, veg. Number two, so okay. One thing I did want to point out, you got to read nutritional labels. You can't assume that you can't, you can't take anything for granted. So people would say uh, hummus, that's a healthy, low fat snack, right? Not the case. I'm not saying it's not healthy. I'm just saying it's not low fat. According to this nutritional label, which is in Hebrew, and so I know most people can't read this, but whatever, 13.5 grams of fat per 100 grams. So that's way out of the low fat territory uh, for me at the moment. Hence, I'm not eating uh, hummus. So basically the last two weeks for me have been like, oh, I feel like eating some hummus. Oh crap, it's not low fat. So what can I eat instead? So I'm just kind of like figuring out these things on the fly as such. Um, so veg is number one, veg and fruit are, are, are all really, really low fat. And you can get you know, sweet potatoes and potato is a great source of great sources of carbohydrates. You can put those in a salad. Obviously, you need to eat protein as well. And I can tell you the way my body works is I really need protein to uh, to feel satiated, especially if there's no fat or very limited fat in the meal. So I've been really making sure that I'm getting enough protein throughout the day. Um, grain. OK, the next thing I want to say is grains are like the thing. So bulgur, I have oats. Uh, so this is what I'm supposed to be eating for breakfast is oatmeal. And I'm putting just some date syrup in it. Uh, you can, you know, depending on where you are in the world, jam might be more prevalent. Uh, this is actually great for me because lentils, green lentils here. I actually have a boatload. Anyone who uh, knows me like in person knows I'm like kind of a bit of a bit of a bit of a hoarder, a bit of a bit of a, bit of a prepper. I have this massive pantry full of dried goods. So now it's like coming in super handy. Um, so uh, lentils are great because you got protein. They're very, very low in fat and you can eat like Indian curries. Uh, you just have to think, what can I do? If there is oil in the recipe, either reduce the oil or use nonstick pans. So these are all changes I'm slightly uncomfortable with making because I've traditionally or up to now avoided non-stick stuff i uh makes me a bit uncomfortable um i've heard bad things about i have asthma for asthmatics it puts off these chemicals but now it's kind of getting a bit like well this is a bigger priority for me so whatever i'm gonna have the, the non-stick um so yeah that's uh, that's grains and now the final food category uh yeah just to, just to continue that point about stuff being not really you can't trust you can't trust what you've heard or what you think. So another, another example would be low fat mayo, right? So you think, oh, it's light mayonnaise. I can have that, that's low fat. Uh, again, this is why it's important to read the nutritional information because the fat percentage here is 23 grams of fat 
per 100 grams. So that's not actually low fat. It's lower than full fat mayo, which is something like 50 or 60 grams of fat, but that's still actually really high fat. So part of the reason I put together this recipe book is um, Israel being Israel, you know, being sort of an out of the way place in the world. There's not quite the same level of consumerism as in the US. So we don't have like these massive supermarkets as much here. And there's just things I have not been able to find such as um, low fat salad dressing. So things like that or low fat mayo, if the lowest I can find in a supermarket is 23 grams per 100, I'm just gonna make my own mayonnaise. Uh, I do have in this book a recipe for almost, almost no fat mayo. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna be spending, after I uh, do my work, finish my work for the day, my job today is to clean up my kitchen because I'm gonna be spending a lot more time in the kitchen. Uh, the other thing I'm planning to do is buying an air fryer. I'm thinking about buying an air fryer and I'm thinking about buying a um, vegetable steamer. So these are just little things, hacks that work for me because I do like takeout and I like eating out, but um, I reckon that to really give this a shot to work, I'm gonna be doing a lot more eating in and even like preparing my own food in to bring out. Uh, so therefore I am cleaning up my kitchen, making sure and I haven't been cooking a lot since Corona, so I'm gonna be making sure my chopping board's available because I'm eating a lot of salad at the moment. Uh, I wanna make sure my, uh, I have a good, very good chef knife and a good honing steel. I like to use a good knife, making sure those are out, making sure my salad bowls are out, that I'm like always ready for low fat eating. Um, final thing, so a lot of people who do low fat cut out dairy. My nutritionist actually recommended a uh, dietitian, uh, to be precise, said uh, don't do dairy or minimize dairy, minimize gluten. Here's where my thinking differs a bit. I, I wanna keep my diet as full as it can be until I know for certain I'm like lactose intolerant or uh, I have a wheat intolerance, which I don't believe I have. I don't want to cut those out because that's gonna make this even harder. So for the moment, I'm doing it in steps and I'm just taking what I can. So from the low fat dairy, I've take you know, there's 1% milk and again, this is turning my typical diet on its head. I always thought reduced fat milk was like a bad idea and I would refuse to buy it on principle. And now I'm only buying it. So there you go, times are changed. Mustard is actually really low fat. So that's like a good thing to throw in your sandwiches. Um, so I've stocked up on mustard. So I think for the first while for me, it's gonna be like, I don't like to use the word safe foods because it sounds, it sounds so like, Sounds like a gateway to anorexia or some or bulimia or some eating disorder that you see foods as dangerous and safe. But I'm 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 having foods that I know are low fat, and these can be like my go-to's until I figure out a way to diversify. So uh, this mustard is 5.3 grams of fat per 100, so it's not super low fat. So next time I'm shopping, I'm gonna write down I'm taking supermarketing much more seriously now. Uh, keeping shopping lists much more seriously. I'm gonna write down, look for a lower fat mustard. Um, one thing I really recommend as well is uh, reading nutritional labels on the internet because there's nothing more awkward than uh, going around a supermarket, looking for five items and spending like all your time looking at labels. Uh, I, I don't know, it just makes me feel a bit self-conscious. So uh, what I'm doing is, um, you can order groceries online like you can in most countries here in Israel. What I'm actually doing is uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately going into a supermarket because I want to know like where this stuff is. I want to know what's the brand of low fat mustard in Israel. What does it look like? So for that reason, I'm kind of doing my reconnaissance first and then going into the supermarket. Um, I'm gonna show you a few more dairy things. So there's this 0.9% Greek yogurt. So that's an option. There's actually a lot of low fat dairy. There's a lot of options in the 0% category. Uh, there's a lot of options in the one to 3% category. And that's the cutoff. So what I, I, I cheated a little bit. I went for a 5% uh, Bulgari. So I think the, the main thing I want to say about what I'm doing, and I'm not saying this is advice, just maybe for people starting it's advice, I'm trying to like do this gradually and like my previous cheese was, um, I'd buy this hard cheese, which was 25% fat. So for me to get down to 5% is already a great reduction in the fat content. So I know that my aspiration is to, all my food stuff should be three or, three or less, but I'm trying to take it gradually and ease into this. So here's another one. This is Labina, which is a, um, 
you won't find lamina really in the Western world. It's kind of a um, strange yogurt thing going on here. This is half percent fat, so really, really lean. So these things are golden, these almost fat-free products. If you eat dairy, I was surprised by this. Uh, this is goat's yogurt, and I would have assumed goat is fatty, but... I picked it up because this product actually just launched here in Israel, this goat yogurt. And I was like, oh, amazing, goat yogurt. And I was like, ah, low fat. But I decided I'm going to look anyway at the fat content. And I see here for 100 grams, 3.5 grams of fat. So I'm actually really surprised and really, really pleased because uh, for various reasons, I'm a big goat fan. Let's not go into these reasons today. Um, and uh, I already did skim milk. Oh, yeah, the last thing I want to show you is this. Uh, low fat turkey so again what exists in Israel for sure exists in the UK and US and wherever you're watching this video so they have these like deli meats here uh, you can get them at the counter or you can get these kind of deli meat bags this does have a high sodium label on it so again something I'm conscious conscious of trying to avoid is cutting out fat and then eating a boatload of crap by substituting that with like really processed or really high sugar or really high sodium stuff so you don't want to do that so um i wouldn't recommend stocking up on deli meats i'm just like this week i've gone to the supermarket like four times every time i'm like learning a new thing i can eat i'm like okay let's go find that so i'm going on these little treasure hunts uh just to know where stuff is and um that's it so far it's really working for me like i get up in the morning now and i'm like okay well i can have oatmeal to start the day with and if I'm still hungry, I can eat a bit of low-fat yogurt. And for lunch, I can uh, cook myself some lentils. Veggie burgers, you would think are low-fat. And they're actually, most of them here at least, are not low-fat. So again, be very, read the nutritional labels. You think, oh, I'll have a veggie burger. Um, when I'm reaching for hummus, I'll either make my own low-fat hummus. Or for the moment, I'll put some uh, mustard in sandwiches because I know it's relatively low-fat. And then for dinner, I will have, uh, and my wife is an amazing cook. I'm not, I'm not a natural in the kitchen, but she is a natural. And uh, she's been really uh, helping me out uh, really well and also eating low fat with me, which is really nice. I think if, you, if you're not like going it alone. Um, so she's been like cooking me like low fat fish or when I do the cooking, I typically do Indian. So I've been doing lentils. She's been doing like really low fat fish. Um, with just like those kind of Japanese glazed sauces or, or low in fat. So there's options and I think if you can do it as a team uh, with somebody else in your house, it's more motivating, obviously. So I don't want to go on for too long. This is already probably the longest video I've ever uploaded to YouTube. Uh, this is the two week vlog of the beginning of my low fat journey. I just want to say one thing. I'm actually really, really excited about it. I feel better eating low fat, um, despite the fact that I absolutely love fatty foods. Something about the last few days, I've been bloated less. I've, so I've been doing more exercise. I've been lifting weights. I've been doing sit-ups. I've been more active. I, it's all like a vicious, it's, it's, it's all like a cycle. There's vicious cycles and there's good cycles. And just to other people doing the low fat meal, again, be prepared for a lot of negativity from uh, non-nutritional people saying, oh, it's ter fat, low fat's terrible and like you're gonna, uh, it's gonna be really bad for you. Uh, stick with your, go to a dietitian, someone who's qualified in this. Um, if you're post gallbladder like me, there's a lot of people post gallbladder doing this and uh, it's not that there aren't options, it's just that you need to change the way you eat in order to focus on uh, reducing the macronutrient of fat it's not about eliminating fat because that's impossible your body needs fat and there's fat in like almost everything uh, it's just about keeping fat within proper proportions so that basically if you're also post post gallbladder you don't have that bile storage reservoir anymore that's why a lot of people like me run into problems um, bile helps to break down fat it's commonly uh, likened to detergent soap when you emulsify fats so when you don't have a big pool of that to break down the fat going into your stomach uh, it's harder for your body to break down fat and that can cause problems undigested fats bloating and whatnot so as i said i'm noticing a big difference i don't definitely don't think it's placebo because i've been trying stuff for two years and nothing's really helped this is the first intervention i can say that's actually 
made an appreciable difference in my bloating and my fullness and my dyspepsia and my burping even. Um, I'm not like, this isn't a cure. Uh, I'm not, I haven't felt a day yet since the surgery where I was like, oh yeah, my body's back to normal. I can just like eat food normally again. It's always been a bit off, but uh, it's less off than it was two weeks ago, which I'm already, it's, it's a psychological thing. It's like, oh, there's actually something I can do to make this better. I'm not just like stuck in this miserable situation uh, for the rest of my life. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this was uh, useful for anybody else joining the low fat party. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, if you're doing low fat. I want to set up a uh, Facebook group or some kind of a community so that people uh, enjoy. If you're on Reddit, uh, post on that subreddit because it's really small and I think it could use more people and I hope it gets more people to post and contribute to it. Thank you guys for watching. More videos coming soon.